this is Pastor Vlad Savchuk at the Center of Life Summer Camp here in Washington State. And I have a wonderful young man here who has a really amazing story to share of the goodness of God in his life. Uh, could you start out by telling us your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Dan Knanahan. I'm originally from Ukraine, but currently live in Spokane, Washington. And Dan, uh, could you uh, tell us what was the problem that you were facing in your life? I had a heart addiction to alcohol, smoking, and uh, drugs. And could you go into a little bit of detail of how addicted you were, how long have you had this addiction, and how did it affect your life? Well, I've been addicted to smoking for about seven years. I've been addicted to alcohol for about five years, and uh, drugs I've been doing for about three to four years. Okay. And how did these addictions affect your life? Um, they caused many problems, such as uh, my family was turned against me. My dad kicked me out three times out of the house. And uh, I was failing school. I, I didn't really see a point of life. Basically, mm -hmm. I didn't want to... Th there was nothing for me to strive for. So your father actually kicked you out of the house for three times. Yes. And you failed school. How many classes did you, or how many years uh, did you I fail? I failed two years of high school. So two years of high school you completely failed? Yes. All because of this addiction? Oh, all because of drugs and alcohol and stuff. Where were you in search of solution for this problem? Um, I've tried uh, calling it cold turkey for a couple of days at work, then I went back to the same thing. Cold turkey meaning you would try to stop on your own? Yes. And it would only last for a few days, and after a few days you will relapse and yes. go back? Okay. And so what happened a few years ago when um, evangelist Gary and Fiona came with the anointing water to the area of Spokane? Uh, what happened was it was around four years ago, and uh, uh, my mom told me about it. I didn't know about it. Uh, and she asked me out of respect to her to come there and just listen what they have to say. Mm -hmm. So I came there, and uh, it was, I thought it was a good sermon. I was a little bit buzzed on alcohol. And, uh, meaning buzzed, meaning you were I under influence, under you were influence, drunk? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I went there, I listened, I thought it was a good sermon. So the next day I go to school, to high school, to see my friends and they ask me if I want to get a smoke or a beer. And for some reason I told them that I'm quitting and they thought I was crazy. I mean, for after doing it for so many years, they thought i never going to quit. Mm -hmm. Did you actually try to use uh, the drugs and smoking after you received the prayer? Uh, like the next day? Well, I haven't received the prayer that night. It was just oh. a sermon. Oh, okay. But I, I took a cigarette. I don't want to light it, but then I felt like I, I don't really want to smoke, that, which never happened before. Okay. So just by sitting in the service, you already felt like the desire for it was already being defeated in you. You no longer had the desire before. So you came for the next service. What happened then? Well, uh, the next service, I didn't even get invitation for anyone, so I just came there by my own will. Okay. And uh, they started asking whoever wants to pray and start praying for people. And uh, I was sitting there, started crying, asking God for forgiveness for my sins. And uh, when the altar call was out and they called people to go to altar call, I came out, they sprayed the holy water, and mm -hmm. I started shaking and I went back to my seat as I was told, and I was just crying for at least couple of hours, couple of hours. Wow. So when the evangelist uh, called for the prayer with the anointing water, you came up there, and you started to already be, even before that, you already started to get convicted. And you started to shake, and you were crying. And as a result of that, what started to happen next few months after that? Um, as a result, the same day, the same night, uh, I did not feel any addictions, as in I would probably smoke at least two packs a day. That, that same night, I knew I was free, so I didn't want no alcohol, no drugs. I couldn't even say a bad word. I thought it was bad, as wow. in, yes. So you've seen a dramatic change in oh, your yeah. heart, in your life. And now, four years later, you're serving God, you're at this camp, and you're walking after God. How is your life right now? Uh, right now, it's wonderful. Um, I'm a leader of this camp. I have never thought I'd get this far in life. Uh, just about four or five years ago, I thought I'd be laying down in a ditch dead, so. Wow, yeah. and what is your advice to people who are maybe facing similar problems, or maybe parents who have children who are facing similar problems? What, what would you tell them? Uh, what my advice is, if your kid is doing something like what I was doing, definitely pray for them. 
that's definitely ask God to bring them to Christ and don't ever kick them out don't ever stop loving them because God loves everybody and try to tell your tell your son tell your daughter that there's still forgiveness because in my situation I thought that I was never gonna get forgiven mm -hmm. and uh, that's what, my what about those who are facing the same situation that you were facing maybe those, addicted yeah those people I mean you guys still have a chance you guys just go to Christ he, he'll forgive anything he can free you from anything I've been in such uh, deep holes that nobody thought, nobody believed in me, and I didn't even believe myself, but God is mighty God. He can do anything. Amen, amen. All the glory goes to Jesus. We thank you so much for sharing your story, and thank you so much for watching this in Jesus' name.